This week in the Missouri Senate, we review two key pieces of legislation that dominated discussions. SJR 74, along with Senator Hoskins. The week began SJR with a long hearing on a dozen different approaches to initiative petition or IP reform. The measures were heard in the Missouri Senate Local Government and Elections Committee on Monday afternoon. Senate Joint Resolution 74 is among these. Senator Mary Elizabeth Coleman of Arnold is the sponsor. I think that there's an attempt to frame this issue primarily and only exclusively as an abortion issue, but this is something that people have been concerned about our constitutional integrity for a very long time. Missouri voters would decide if any change made to how initiative petitions would get onto future ballots. During committee discussions, Senator Barbara Ann Washington of Kansas City told the sponsor, some people have a lot of questions about these resolutions. Why is it okay to silence the voice of the people for issues that they have attempted to have us fix for decades, but not okay to elect us individually? The panel voted Senate Joint Resolution 74 due pass on Tuesday morning. Elements of Senate Joint Resolutions 48, 59, 61, and 83 have also been added. Missouri senators could discuss this resolution on the floor of the Missouri Senate at any time. There are political realities to any of these decisions, right? The Hancock Amendment is a good reason why the initiative petition process is important. Missouri Senate President Pro Tem Caleb Rodden of Columbia says any changes made to the initiative petition process this session would most likely not have an impact on current petition drives. That even if IP reform were to go to the ballot in August and pass to change the threshold, to change to a concurrent majority, the court would probably allow them to live under the old rules in November. Missouri Senate Minority Floor Leader John Rizzo of Independence says voters added a check and balance to the legislature a few decades ago. My dad was in the majority back then. You guys know that. I mean, they went around the legislature and they passed the Hancock Amendment, which they tout today, which was a fiscally conservative, responsible thing that the voters approved. Also this week, Senate Bill 748, we took up in Senate Appropriations Committee. It's called the FRA, which stands for Federal Reimbursement Allowance. Senate Bill 748 moved forward. This measure would modify provisions relating to reimbursement allowance taxes. Senator Denny Hoskins of Warrensburg says this proposal does not contain what he considers to be pro-life language. Up until the year 2020, we included pro-life language in budget bills, and so we would not have to fund abortions and Planned Parenthood in the state. But Senator Tracy McCreary of St. Louis County says she does not believe such wording belongs in this legislation. If we can't keep it clean, not play politics with the FRA, it would really jeopardize Medicaid funding for hospitals. Senate Bill 748 is the first measure on the Missouri Senate perfection calendar and could be taken up for discussion at any time. This bill is a... Monday afternoon, the Missouri Senate Judiciary and Civil and Criminal Jurisprudence Committee heard two proposals on the same topic. Senate Bill 767 would modify rules relating to the age of marriage. Senator Holly Thompson Rader of Scott City sponsors this legislation. I myself got married at 15 with my mother's consent to my 21-year-old boyfriend. And at the time, I was operating in what I thought was an adult mindset. I was contacted by a constituent who asked... Senator Lauren Arthur of Kansas City sponsors Senate Bill 1342. Child marriage poses serious risks to children. I think it's been a stated position of the General Assembly that we want to do everything we can to protect children. Committee action has not yet been taken on either of these bills. We are adjourned until Monday, February 5th at 4. The first five weeks of the 2024 regular legislative session are now completed. Session will end on May 17th. And remember, you can follow these and other issues facing the Missouri Senate by visiting our website, senate.mo.gov. Reporting from the state capitol, I'm Dean Morgan.